of the Hard Review, a show where we check the pulse on what's going on in Hingham. We'll give you some quick updates and things to check out and then speak with our community guests. Today, we'll be speaking with Recreation Commission Chair Vicki Donlin about what's going on with recreation this year in the town and her involvement with the Pat Roach Hospice. We'll also speak with Deidre Anderson, Executive Director of the Hingham Historical Society, about what kind of events and offerings the society has for the community this year and how the organization looks to grow. Let's start with some headlines provided by Town Leads as well as our Harbor Media blogger, Carol Meyer. Great news! Work on the near replica of the former 1859 Italian-style Lincoln Building in Hingham Square is nearing completion. After the roof collapsed following extremely heavy snowfall in early 2015, the building which was slated for eventual demolition was raised, leaving behind a pile of rubble. Retail is planned for the first floor with high-end rental apartments on the top two floors. Downtown regulars, residents, and out-of-towners alike can't wait to see what new life these shops will bring to the area. What kind of retail would you like to see? Military and Veterans Appreciation Night will be taking place in the Hingham High School Gymnasium on Wednesday, January 23rd during Hingham's home wrestling match against Pembroke High School. The event will begin promptly at 6.55 p.m. Admission is free and there will be concessions for all military and veterans. The Hingham Police Department Color Guard will represent colors as the national anthem is sung by a student athlete, Nick Capodalupo. All military and veterans in attendance will be recognized. One of the most pressing issues on the minds of Hingham citizens these days is whether or not it makes sense for the town to purchase the portion of Aquarian Water Company that serves Hingham, Hull, and part of Cohasset. Some residents think that would be a wise move, with an expected savings of about $50 million over 30 years according to consultants hired by the town. Opponents, including some Hull residents, oppose such a purchase for a number of reasons. To become the most informed about this issue, refer to related documents on the town website, www.hingham-mass.gov, along with reports that were recently presented as part of a third-party reviewed commission by the town of Hingham. View the latest water company acquisition meetings held on January 23rd, January 15th and January 10th to see more financial information, study timelines, and joint meetings between committee on Comcast 9, Verizon 30, or go to www.youtube.com slash user slash Hingham TV to view all of our latest videos. Well, I'm here with Vicki Donlin, the chair of the Recreation Commission here in Hingham, and I welcome to the show, Vicki. Thanks, Graham. Nice to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, a lot of people know of the Recreation Commission, but um, can you tell folks a little bit more about what they, what you guys do, and some of kind of the um, the mission statement? Absolutely. Of the well, Hingham Recreation is really for all ages, um, from our summer camp that has ages between 2.9 years old okay. right up until our team extreme. extreme. Um, kids uh, have the opportunity to have summer fun right after school ends, right before the school starts. Those programs come out in early March so that people can sign up for camps. During the school year, uh, we have anything from uh, tennis programs um, that are sponsored elsewhere. We have a fitness room uh, that's available at Town Hall. We have yoga on regular days. We have a phenomenal dance program oh, nice. uh, that is just um, probably the best dance program here on the South Shore. What kind of dance? Dance, it's ballet. Nice. Uh, there are a couple of other programs that are available. And we're recently in the process of starting what we call our lifelong programs. And that's for active adults, uh, pretty much of any age, um, with walking programs for those interested in maybe not running the 4th of July road race, which I was telling you a little <laughs> yeah, about. Exactly. But uh, it's a four and a half mile road race. Not well, you, everybody's a runner. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta right? start somewhere. <laughs> so walking uh, is an opportunity, but just getting out there and being active. Uh, some of the other lifelong programs, believe it or not, how about archery? You know, archery, that fun. You, you, it is fun. And you know what, anybody can do it. It's one of those things, maybe you did it once as a kid, but 
you get older and you say, why not give that a shot? And then, of course, the, the craze that's uh, coming home from Florida and is really taking all of New England is pickleball. Do you know anything about pickleball? I think I've heard of it. All right. Pickleball. And how does that one work? Uh, well, pickleball is one of those things when your knees get a little uh, difficult from playing too much tennis. And it's similar. It's a little between... Um, badminton and tennis. Okay. It's a smaller court, but it's on a tennis court. It's a different kind of racket and a different kind of ball. Anything and I like, will tell is you. Is it like a squash? Thing? And not like squash in the fact, because squash, you've got to really get down. The ball has a good bounce to it. Pretty much, uh, it's a doubles game, but it is a game for older adults that when the knees and the hips are just getting a little <laughs> tired, you can play pickleball. And I'll tell you, we have about 75 to 100 now signed up in our pickleball uh, classes, and it's just expanding. How many? Uh, over uh, almost 100 people. And wow. I expect this year will even be bigger. We um, have turned over some of the tennis courts to pickleball courts. What's exciting about pickleball is you can play it on a tennis court, but then people right after you can play tennis. So it makes it very special. Nice. So again, you know, it's for all ages. And uh, this year we'll also do some special day trips for what we're calling our lifelong learners. Maybe they want to go see the Newport mansions, get in a bus, go with another uh, gr those. group of nice. people. Unbelievable. Yeah. And even one to the Bronx Zoo. So there's a little bit of something for everybody. All right, so take like a tour bus and exactly. go down there? And Absolutely. Get together nice. with a few friends. Just sit back, relax, and see something that you have always wanted to see, or just to have a fun time for a day trip. Any like uh, music stuff at all? Well, um, dance, we are. Yeah, the um, we actually do ballroom dancing, okay. both for kids and for. Uh, lifelong learners. And uh, I don't know about you, but I took ballroom dancing when I was a young kid, I see. <laughs> so it's never too early to learn how to ballroom exactly. dance. So there's really, uh, you know, it's recreation is about anything that gets you out involved in a social way and in an active way. So what are some like upcoming events? Talking about these oh activities, my goodness. what are some events coming up that people should definitely um, check out? All I can say is go to hangemrec.com. There are so many different events. It's hard to even right. you know, tell you what's coming up. Uh, some of them have series of events, so you'd have to sign up in time to be part of the series. Other things like yoga, um, yoga is a, uh, and spinning. We have spinning for all ages. That's we have big. the best bikes that you can possibly find, the Kaiser bikes, right at Town Hall and Hingham uh, Central Street. So perfect place to, to really get active. Uh, but I'm very, very proud of all that we're doing. And I guess um, one of the things I want people at home to really know about is one of our newer initiatives that's just been funded by the CPC and hopefully will be passed at town meeting. And that's a town-wide field study. Um, Hingham has about 50 acres of phenomenal fields. Uh, they are assets to everybody in town, not just kids at the schools, but adults who play any kind of sport. And for years, we've heard, you know, there aren't enough baseball fields, there aren't enough football fields. For like pickup games field. and events and stuff. Exactly. So. And um, many other towns have, have done this to go to an outside independent professional who can come in and assess really what the needs are of the town, what the future needs of a town are, what fields we actually have, what the resting plan should be, what the maintenance plan. Do we need more fields or do we have enough fields and we just need a different kind of layout? So, sort of a planning position, I guess. Right. Independent so that you don't have any constituency uh, or any particular athletic group trying to you know, push their weight a little bit further. The schools, in, in a town like Hingham, you have the schools who are responsible for certain fields. Recreation department is responsible for uh, many fields, but also the board of selectmen are responsible. So getting an independent outside expert to really take a look at everything and say, this is the best use of the fields you have. This is the best maintenance plan. Maybe you need more fields. Maybe you just need a different layout. And I'm so, sure they're applying you know, research that They've, you know, collected that they've done and others. Exactly. Exactly. analysis they've collected from other areas similar to Ingham so they can apply it. That's and, right. So it sounds like there's a lot of great stuff going on in the department. Um, so how do folks communicate with you guys about sort of their needs or suggestions or um, any kind of um, you know, wants they might have or comments? That's a good question because I think uh, uh, people don't often know that there are people available believe it or not, seven days a week at the rec department. Town Hall, because we're, uh, we're, um, our home is Town Hall, 
Town halls open only open five days a week. Right. Recreation departments open seven days a week. There is always someone there uh, if you need them. And again, the phone number is an easy way to get in touch with people. You can drop into the office. The phone number again, 781-741-1464. But you can drop by the office. Um, one of the things I didn't mention, which is one of my favorite things now that I have grandchildren, uh, we do wonderful uh, birthday parties, uh, toddler birthday parties oh, with nice. big bouncy houses and, and and I mean just everything a, a toddler birthday party should be about and those tend to happen on of course Saturdays and Sundays basketball games as weekends, well yeah, weekends exactly, so, so. Um, but to answer your question people need to know that we are available the best way is usually uh, by phone um, because if someone doesn't answer the phone you can leave a message and someone will get back so there's no lack of way you know there is no lack of way we are the we were the first department in town to actually have a facebook page so you can get in right touch so with you can communicate you can communicate with the recreation department easier we than have really a um, any other what department. i call an active an active facebook page because it is interactive people respond so people can get in touch with us any way they like and they're welcome to call me anytime oh, all right but I won't give you my telephone number. <laughs> yeah, I <was> <laughs> I'm easy to find. O only the office right. number. For now. <laughs> That's fine, though. So I also understand that you're involved with a very important um, thing, which is a hospice in the community. Yes. And I kind of wanted to discuss that a little bit more in terms of your role there and Absolutely. the kind of things you guys um, are doing there and how that involves it's, the community. It's um, the Pat Roach Hospice House. Mm -hmm. It is uh, in Hingham on the top of Turkey Hill. Many viewers at home may know it as the friend's home. For many years, it was an assisted living um, home. My mom actually was there for six months of her life. And it is just a beautiful Georgian home, um, really a mansion, built mm -hmm. by Ezra Thayer, who was the uh, dean of the Harvard Law School in 1933. And uh, in 2013, the Norwell VNA um, purchased the home to take it in and create a hospice house. We're the only nonprofit of this kind on the South Shore. And for those who don't know about hospice, and I don't know how aware of hospice you are, but hospice is when people reach, and it, it's not just about older people. I mean, anybody in their lifetime who is within six months of perhaps uh, at the end of life has an opportunity to participate in a hospice facility, having hospice care. And the hospice care is all about end of life care with dignity, compassion, um, and having your, the people around you that need to, you know, to make support it right, you and, to support yeah. you for that end of life care. Uh, so it's as much about the individual as it is the family. And what's particularly wonderful about this beautiful home is not only are the rooms just beautifully decorated, but there's a tea room, there's a music room, uh, there's an, a total family room for those who want to come and perhaps you know, the most important thing in your life was maybe the way your mom made your macaroni and cheese, and you're not going to get that in a facility. Well, here, mom can go downstairs and make you macaroni and cheese and right. bring it up to your room and just make this place so special. So uh, it's only a 12-bed facility, um, but it's just so special to have it here in Hingham. And uh, I'm very proud. I'm a board member for the NVNA and Pat Roach Hospice House, and my goal is to make sure that uh, people are aware of this magnificent place. My sis I have an older sister who passed away a few years ago, and it was my first experience going through hospice in a facility. And what I can tell you is that when all of your family are in one place, and there is nobody necessarily doing the heavy lifting right. or the dirty work or and that's what happens nobody's cooking nobody's everybody is there just to be together and celebrate a life it's right. about celebration and it may be a week it may be a day it may be several months but people can come and go and feel comfortable now the Pat Roach Hospice House also has a couple of bedrooms that are available for people perhaps your loved one lives here in Hingham and you live in California well, you can come and stay in the hospice home um, nearby. So the visitor Your access is really a, it's, a It's all about bringing thing. families together, yes. Yeah. And uh, a question I'm sure people at home have is, what does something like this cost? Hospice care is generally covered by uh, insurance, Medicare, and the hospice facility itself is not covered. Um, although, because it's a nonprofit, if it is a charitable uh, situation, 
there are opportunities for people who can't afford it to, um, to also come in. Basically, the cost is around $450 a day for the beautiful facility. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, I, it just, it's so important for me to have people understand how wonderful an opportunity it is to spend that last time in your life with that loved one. Yeah, that sounds like a beautiful thing. It, it really is, and having family near you is so important. Um, are there any like developments in the next years or coming years that you guys are working on um, in terms um, of hospice? Or? Really, you know, what we're really working on is getting the word out. Um, mm -hmm. Until you've experienced hospice, and um, again, I ask you to ask people that perhaps you know, until you've actually experienced yourself, it's hard to understand. So mm -hmm. many people um, pass away in nursing homes and it's not a comfortable place to be or pass away in, in hospitals. And then many people find, as people did generations and generations, passing away at home. And home can be certainly very good for some people. I mean, it can be the right place because often people want to be at home, but it's not always the best conducive place for a family, um, depending upon situations of family. And visitors and everything. And visitors, and exactly, exactly. Right. So. Um, what I like to tell people at home, call the Pat Roach Hospice House. Uh, find us online. Um, go to the nvna.org. Come and have a tour. Tours are available for people. I give tours all the time. People there are there to show you around. Don't wait until um, you really need something like this. Come look at it and be proud that Hingham yeah. has it, even if you just come and you want to look at it so that you are uh, aware of it and you might pass along that information to somebody else. Well, that sounds really good. It really is. All right. Well, hey, Vicki, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you very and, much, um, Graham. It's been lovely chatting with you. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope everyone can uh, check out those resources, uh, go on the websites, give Vicki a call. She's, uh, she's avail very always available. Always available. Always available. To answer any questions, and um, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk history. So a lot of people might know that we have a historical society here in Hingham, but can you tell folks a little bit more about what the mission statement is and kind of the core work you guys do there? Sure. Uh -huh. The Hingham Historical Society is a member-supported non-for-profit. Mm -hmm. So while we are housed in the beautiful Hingham Heritage Museum at Old Derby, the big yellow building downtown, we also own and manage the Old Ordinary property at 21 Lincoln Street. So our mission is to, and it has been since the beginning of the 20th century, is to collect and preserve and promote through multiple means uh, the history of Hingham, Massachusetts. Very, very cool. Yeah. So what kind of means do you guys do that? By? We do a lot and it's ever expanding. And that's the beauty and the fun of um, being part of the Historical Society, which is open to everyone. Uh, I had a funny story where someone came and they said, when I first moved to Hingham, I thought you had to be asked to join the Hingham Historical <laughs> Society. I was like, no way. It's, uh, it's open to everyone. It is a member supported. but. We do everything from well-known programs in the community, like the upcoming Lincoln Day celebration. We do a kids' colonial camp. We have the oldest house tour in the United States. Whoa, very um, cool. And recently, we've been doing a lot more lectures now that we have a beautiful, renovated home at Old Derby. And we do author events, and we're going to be very exciting doing a teacher seminar later this year with um, teachers from around the Commonwealth that come to the Hingham Heritage Museum to learn from master teachers and uh, famous historians. So nice. we're very excited. So you don't have to be invited in like a vampire. like You do say. not, but thank goodness. <laughs> so if someone is interested in becoming a member, they just, I'm assuming, go on the website. Yes. It's yep. pretty self-explanatory. Yep. And that's our, our membership is annual. It runs January to December. Okay. And that provides you access to the Hingham Heritage Museum and Old Derby, at Old Derby and Old Ordinary throughout the year. And you get advanced notification for our ticketed programs mm -hmm. and you get newsletters and we send out um, emails with um, historic links and videos that we partner with Harbor Media oh, so on. It's so it's great. Yeah. Nice. And you, got, and you were mentioning you do a lot of lectures, which I've heard a lot about. So yes. you guys, where can, if folks haven't seen them, where can they go learn more? 
and check out a lecture. Great. Well, we've done two lecture series this past academic year, and the first is The Spirit of Enterprise, and it was focusing on the businesses that shaped and were shaped by Hingham, Massachusetts, and we're in the middle of that series right now. We just had a wonderful lecture this past Saturday, which will be aired on Harbor Media, so oh, you can go cool. to the YouTube Harbor Media channel, uh, with Steve Hurley, who is a Hingham resident, was born and raised here, and he also happens to be the Mass Fisheries and Wildlife Southeast Manager. And Steve gave an unbelievable overview of the fish and the fisheries that have influenced Hingham over time. And it was both a fascinating natural history lecture about the fish and the fishes that are in Hingham Bay and the freshwater of Hingham, but also a reminder of how complex history is. One of the points he highlighted was we had just had an author event in December with a local author, Martha Buick, who's written a book on Tranquility Grove, the site of Hingham's great abolitionist picnic in the 19th century. And we have a strong, wonderful, uh, proud history of being a town that supported the abolition of slavery. And Steve reminded us that our big business of salted cod helped feed slaves in the West Indies. Oh. So it's a reminder that history is complex. And those are the things that we hope to educate the community with and to remind people that we invite people in to research those difficult questions because we all grow when we find out you know the complexities of history and how not to repeat right some of and, lear and you're learning a little past. bit about the environment with New England and the area and the South Shore specifically and yes. how that affects the culture and the history here yes so that's massively important and interesting right. so interesting and it helps you learn more about you know where we are where we're going right um, exactly. so you got, were mentioning a lot of the events you have coming mm -hmm. up um, what are like a, a couple of the main, I mean, you guys don't like you have a lot, but what yes. are some of the main events you guys have? Well, yeah. we're going to be doing a new event on Saturday, February 9th, which mm -hmm. is open, free and open to the public. Okay. And we have a wonderful partnership with the Hingham Public Schools and Andy Hoy, the head of the K-12 Social Studies Program. All of the Hingham High School students who are participating in History Day, who have made it through the finals at the high school and are moving on to state, regional, tournaments will be presenting their History Day projects in a family festival on Saturday, February 9th. So Very whether cool. they have research papers or websites or poster boards about a historic topic of their choosing, um, they'll, they will be set up throughout the museum and the public can come in and learn uh, from It takes me students. back. I used to love like AP history. history. Yes. I used to love history when I was like, Middle school, elementary school, right. so that's very cool. So it's an right. opportunity for them to get a little exposure to the great work they did. And, and practice before and practice they have too. to be in front of the Regional History Day judges. But I love it. It's, you know, it's a chance for them to show their work to their community who may not be able to make it to the regional competitions. We've actually been asked for this by our membership who will read about, oftentimes read about, because Hingham has such a great social studies uh, program and yeah. we've had, you know, national finalists and uh, it's been amazing. We've had members ask us, is there any way we could see those student uh, performances or presentations? So Ooh. we're excited for that. And then the weekend after is our annual 43rd year of Lincoln Day, where we're celebrating the long and rich history of the Lincoln family in the United States, which started here in Hingham, Massachusetts. So um, anything else you guys have coming up that you know, you, you want to let folks know about that they can attend? Or, well, we've or? had our inaugural exhibit is okay. Boxes, bu Buckets, and Toys, which is the woodenware of Hingham. And right. that is really, if you look over the course of Hingham history, I remember asking um, Hingham Historical Society's first uh, executive director, Suzanne Buchanan, once. I, we were having lunch and I said, oh, so what's, you know, what do you think Hingham is most famous for? This, you know, the preservation of architecture, thanks to our historic districts commission over all these centuries. And she said, no, the buckets. And that from our early founding uh, as coopersmiths who worked with wood up until industrialization, Hingham made buckets and woodenware. And so that beautiful first exhibit is what launched the Hingham Heritage Museum and will be on display through the summer. Uh, but then we will move on to other exhibits. So I encourage everybody to come on down to the museum and see the exhibit before we 
uh, pack it up uh, for an, a new exhibit. That's a must see before that it closes down. You gotta check that out. You gotta understand why we're called Bucket Town. Exactly. <laughs> and you can find out, I'm assuming, the website's a good resource yes. to check details. Right. And we have a very active Instagram presence. So yeah, okay. I encourage everyone at Hingham Historical or at Hingham Heritage Museum. We have several accounts to focus on different aspects of our programming or at Old Ordinary, which will um, tell you about the different programs and of course, hinghamhistorical.org. I imagine Instagram works pretty well. It's pretty visual and you have a lot of very old spaces it's and places exactly, and stuff like that. You got it, precisely. You can kind of share the activities you guys are doing. Yeah, 24 million hashtags of history. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Do, do many students, um, is there a way for like students to get involved and intern or maybe volunteer? Great I mean, question. I know you guys are plugged yeah. into the schools and you are a resource, but can someone yeah. actually say, hey, I want to volunteer or intern with the uh, Historical Society? Absolutely. We do have an established program with the high school social studies department, mm -hmm. so juniors and seniors can choose internship with his Hingham Historical Society as one of their courses over their high school career. Uh, during the summer, we sponsor a Sally Hess internship okay. named after an er early um, major contributor to the society and that's for a master's level student who's gone on to do some graduate work in public history or museums uh, but we've had many Hingham uh, students come back and be our Sally Hess intern which is wonderful and we welcome students from NDA from mm -hmm. BC High any other school private school doesn't have to be absolutely we're right open we're very flexible uh, what if someone wants to donate Oh, even better. <laughs> so what if someone really is a history buff? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm a history buff. Yeah. But I'm, I imagine there's people or organizations that see the, you know, the absolute value in what you guys do and want to you know, donate maybe you know, financially. Um, how, how does something like that work? Graham, you are. You want to travel with me for the next year? I could use that. <laughs> you be your um, spokesperson. Yeah, absolutely. We could do that. Um, yeah. uh, donations, financial donations, and donations of time for volunteering are critical. Right. We um, we financial donations help our endowment, which ensures the preservation and the maintenance of the beautiful right. Hingham Heritage Museum and Old Ordinary for generations to come. So we are absolutely dependent both on membership income and financial donations. And so um, that's that's really critical, especially we just, as most townspeople know, we just went through a major renovation of our headquarters to the, establish the Hingham Heritage Museum. And now it's time to fill the coffers again. So we'll be actively recruiting individuals and foundations and grants to do that. And that's a that's, it's an easy sell. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. place, and there's a lot of exciting things. Right, especially if you're in the community on. already and stuff. Absolutely. And if you see those buildings and you think, I want those to be here and I want them to be vibrant for as long as I can see into the future, then that's we we need support. Do you, do you see a bit of like an uptick with when you have tourists in town, like checking out all the you know the kind of the history and whatnot that might draw them to hang them? Do you see kind of is there more activity on your end in terms of? Without a doubt. Dealing with questions or people are interested yeah. or... Without a doubt. We've seen an uptick. In fact, we had a wonderful um, high school intern last summer evaluate our guest book and we've hit all 50 states and many wow, international cool. um, countries. And you so can show that off and say, hey, we look. can show that off. And even today, right. we had two gentlemen come up from Chatham. It's the off season in Chatham. They're innkeepers in Chatham. And they always get questions from tourists who come from all over the world to visit Cape Cod. Yeah. Where should we spend the day before we get our flight out of Logan? And they said, we are always hearing Hingham. So we had to come and see what it was. So we rolled out the red carpet. We you know, showed them everything in the museum. We recommended sandwich and dinner places and where to show. So um, that's our goal as well. You're putting Hingham on the map. Well, Hingham's on the map. It's already on the map. We're just helping, right? we hope. Right. Exactly. Right. That makes sense. Good. Well, hey, it was a pleasure having pleasure, you on the Graham. show. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing everything the Historical Society does. We're all very grateful. And it's very exciting stuff, and people need to check that stuff out more. Well, thanks, Graham. I appreciate yeah, the support. So Harbor Media has been a wonderful partner. Absolutely. I feel very lucky. Absolutely. Thanks. So everyone, go check out the website. And thanks again for having you on. Thanks, uh, for, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. All right. Great.